Welcome back to Dalra Models. This video I'm going to be doing the start of the engine and prep work and paint on the CBR kit from Tamiya. So starting off using Tamiya cement, the thicker version, to glue the joint. So just checking how the parts fit before I apply the glue. Ordinarily I would use extra thin for this and get nice neat joints but I know some people might not have that and only have this glue. So I'm using that to demonstrate how to do this and also how to clean up any excess glue that squeezes out as you're doing this because with it being thicker, you will get more glue coming out. So as you can see, making it a nice tight joint and giving it a good squeeze to, uh, to do that. And check how the next one fits. So that looks okay as it is there with that fit. So I can put some more glue on this bit now. It's important, even with Tammy kits to test fit what you're doing not necessarily because they'll have a bad part of it but to make sure that you know where you're putting the piece and where to more importantly put the glue so you don't get loads of glue in the wrong places and unnecessarily having it where you're going to stick your fingers in it or anything like that so I'm taking my time with it just to make sure that that's the case get everything to line up properly where I want it. Making sure I don't stick my fingers in any of those gaps and then give it a good squeeze to have a nice tight bond. So next bit now, unfortunately I went off camera a little bit um, so apologies for that. It's very easy to do when you doing things like this to wander away from the camera a little bit especially when you want to concentrate or focus on something but it's basically the same as what I did a moment ago with the other pieces so that bit's there now as you can see the glue oozing out of the centre part there so we'll do some clean up on that in a bit once it's all dry That's looking all right. So now I can put that last bit in there. Anyone familiar with Tamiya kits and the mo well motorbike kits will know how the engines go together, and they're much of a muchness with them. They're all very similar. They've got these four sides that make it up. So I know some people would prefer to paint these separately to ease with the masking because they want to be multiple colours but my preference is always to glue things together that are the same colour and then it allows me to make the joints cleaner so that's what I'm doing and eagle eyed viewers will notice that I missed the bar out of the centre which I then had to pull it apart to refit um, as you can possibly pick out on the bit that's in the bench now so moving forward getting the rest of the parts for the engine so little plug caps and a cover for the head and all the other bits that go along with it so cut the sump off so just checking the instructions as well just to make sure that I'm getting all of the pieces that I need last thing I want to do is get to the point of painting get all of the bits painted that I think I need and then go to do the assembly for it all and find that I've not cut a piece off that I needed and now I've got to stop what I'm doing, go back, paint that and it just delays everything. So it's better to go through, make sure you get everything that you need for the section that you're working on and double check to make sure that you've not missed anything. So a few hoses here. the 
quick check just to make sure I'm getting the right ones. Sometimes you have hoses that get done later down the line, so it's worth double checking. And then onto spruce C, which has some of the engine covers, clutch cover, various bits like that. Oil filter. Again, typical Tamiya engine, the way it's separated with non coloured sprues and things for what you need. Once they're all off, I can start the clean up of the parts. So, Tamiya kits generally have the nubs in the underside where they're not going to be seen. So, when you cut them off, the cleanup's pretty easy, and then the painted area isn't going to have anything visible for where it's been cleaned up. As we're using the hobby design set, it's important to reference the instructions regularly during the progress to make sure that everything's where it should be and any modifications are made accordingly. So in this case, hose clamps, as you can see there, and on the previous instructions, there's photo etch hose clamps, which are these pieces here um, that want attaching. So as you can see there, they're going to look a lot better than what's moulded in, which is that bit there. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can either get a knife for the areas like that where you've got close to another part that you don't want to damage, but on areas like the outside here, you can just come in with a file or a sander and clean it up that way. You just need to assess which is easier for each individual item that you want to remove. If it's a really big piece, you could use cutters or a photo I saw or something like that, but for this, the sand is sufficient. When I was checking through the instructions, one thing I noticed was the um, dipstick handle um, is practically a butt joint on here which would easily break. So what I've decided to do, as you can see there, that's the attachment point for it, is to drill it out and use some wire to attach it so that I get a stronger joint and makes it easier for fitting when I come to that point. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through and then don't have any worry about clearance or anything like that. So just going carefully, don't want to snap the drill or bend it or anything silly like that. through now so I'm going to just check my one more wire make sure that that goes through properly a little bit more just to make sure that where's it gone there it is um yeah just clean the hole out a little bit i think it's just a little bit of excess in there should go all the way through. There you go. So I've got that bit done and then the next bit is to do the same with this. So because it's got a little nub on there for attaching, I'm just going to cut that off quickly with a knife. Carefully not go through my thumb and then I can drill that bit out as well. I don't want to go too deep on this one because I don't want to damage it or go through anywhere where it's going to be visible. Just enough to be able to attach the wire to it. So that should be enough and then get rid of the bit that's left over and then the wire should fit through that hole. Like that. So now I can put some glue on it. using 
Bob Smith gold as I always do for these sort of things. Put it in my little cap. And then what I'll do is I'll just tap the wire into the glue and then get rid of any excess off it. Because you only need a tiny little amount for this. And then I can put that through the hole. And that's good to make sure it's pushed all the way through. And that's all that's needed. And then once that's left to dry a little bit, then I can come along with some cutters and just cut it off. May, will make the point though, don't use your nice cutters. Um, if you try and use your ones that you cut off the sprue with, then you'll probably damage them. And that's the last thing you want. So use old cutters that are designed for cutting wire. Uh, as you can see, that fits nicely now. And then when I've painted everything, I'll be able to put that on easier and then just check the sun fits and that wire doesn't get in the way and then I'm not going to have any worries about it snapping off in the future or getting knocked or damaged or anything silly like that when I was gluing the block together I mentioned about excess glue which you can see there so now I'll show you how to clean it up so you could and depending on the area use a sander but in that situation there I think it's a little bit too tight to be able to do that so what I'm going to do is just use a knife and just scrape the excess away but I have to make sure that the glue is fully dry otherwise you're just going to spread it around to make even more mess which you obviously don't want so just carefully doing that and same process as when you're standing I'm just looking for the lighter areas and with shinier areas to to go so that I know I've got a smoother joint so it's quick and simple and then do the same for the rest of it and then onto paint so as always zero paints grey primer check it in the airbrush that my flow is working okay and then start with some light coats and it's always the same process that I do like, like coats and normally about two or three of them to make sure I get all areas covered particularly on something like this that's a tricky shape I want to go at all different angles to make sure it gets covered properly uh, that's the first coat done Not that obvious compared to what it was before, because it was great before, but you might be able to see it. I certainly can. Um, and then I'll just run through all of the small bits now. try something different with these hoses so I'm getting some racing white and some of the rubber black and mix them together to make a lighter grey and then an old pair of my wife's tights um, that I've put the piece in to give it some texture 
And like I said, this is something new to me. I'm experimenting here a little bit to, to see what results I get. So let's have a look. So you've got one there that I've done with just normal black and then one that you can see that I've got the texture to. So hopefully it comes up on camera. So that's it for this video, just doing the prep work and the paint work. So the next video will be doing all of the assembly and detail and everything else on it. I have done one on masking as well, which I'll upload at some point on the engine block. So you can see my process for doing that and getting around it to get a night um, line and everything. So that's what's coming up. So there you go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you next time.